The first thing is one of those amazing images that we've got in Oxfam where you've got the kids playing in swirling dirty water in, I think it's in Kiribati, where there, it's clear that the water has, be, has breached the sea wall. And that's about sea level rises. So it's not like it's incredibly dramatic. It's not like a, a you know, horribly powerful cyclone. It's actually just the day-to-day -day reality. That's the sort of stuff that really makes me think, yeah, we've got to do something about this. We all have a shared responsibility. Whether we're coming from countries like New Zealand or the States or China that have really, well those two countries in particular, have really high carbon emissions, or whether it's in countries like in the Pacific where it's actually very low emissions and they've got in many ways very low responsibility, we're all in this together. So yes, we absolutely, we owe it to our neighbours, to our communities, to our country and to the part in the world that we live, plus our future generation. So what's really interesting for us right now, we're right in election season, it's really important that we understand what each of those parties are doing and have committed to around climate change. Right now, because whoever's in government will have the power to make some significant change. I think this is actually an issue not just for the, the party in government, it's for the parties in, in opposition as well, because it's about cross-party commitment. So key for us has been give us a piece of climate legislation that holds our government and our future governments to account. This is way beyond the three-year term. When we have a piece of legislation, she says very optimistically, because I believe that's exactly the way we need to go, it will be a cross-party piece of legislation. This is not about playing games with political leverage or anything like that. This is about the future for our, for our immediate children and for our grandchildren, and we owe it to them.